Good evening. My name is Jason Leosatis. This is my show Outside the Box again this evening. Absolutely delighted and absolutely honoured this evening. I've got a fantastic guest on who I've been looking at for years and years. My wife's had his books around the house for so long. This man's a hero. He's been called a Martin Luther King of the medical world. And I'll second that. My goodness. Thank you, Dr. Robert Young, for coming on my show this evening. Well, it's a, it's a real pleasure. And, and uh, I look forward to our discussion here today. I'm so delighted. For, you, it's, it, for me, it's morning. For you, it's evening. So yep. for those who are watching this. It's amazing with the technology. Well, Dr. Robert Young, whew, where do we start? Um, really, I'll sort of start by saying uh, thank you for your great um, testimony first with Sasha Stone at the, um, uh, you're now a commissioner on the International Tribunal for National Justice with some amazing people there. Um, thank you for that. Very moving. My wife cried. I was choking up and everything. Um, amazing, you know, and th this, is, this is sort of the start of my new shows about health and happiness and well-being and a better way of living and being on the planet. And I've just got to say before I begin this whole thing is that there is a new world. Uh, I just jotted it down. There. there is a new world waiting and wanting to be born, a new world of health, happiness, freedom, which is being purposely prevented or thwarted, I could say, by big pharma controlling cliques in the power and money business. And that's a fact. And this is part of my work now. And this is why I'm so really honored to be with you, Dr. Dr. Young. Um, Dr. Robert Young has devoted his life and his, 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 his liberty as well. Um, terribly thrown in prison, but because he wasn't healing help, he wasn't healing people of cancer. He was helping people to understand how to heal themselves of cancer by alkalizing the body. His, his great book, 10 million copies, 29 languages, the PH Miracle, which I've seen in my house for decades, and many other books, author and co-author of many books, PH Miracle, the PH Miracle for diabetes, the PH Miracle for cancer, the cancer solution, the, uh, the sick and tired, reverse cancer now. You know, it's absolutely fascinating what you've done, uh, Dr. Young. Honestly, it's just amazing. And recently I had, before we get you talking here, recently I had a, a great guy called um, D D David... Um, Oh gosh, I've forgotten his name. It's ridiculous. David Noakes, um, whose partner, Lynn Thiel, I'm glad to say, has just been released from prison in uh, France, where she was on hunger strike. Lynn and David have been persecuted, just like yourself, um, thrown in prison. And uh, I had David on the show recently, and I met him up in Glastonbury. What a wonderful man. And it's people like yourselves, uh, Robert, uh, and really, who, who, who are helping people stay out of prison in this huge clamp down on truth and a better world for humanity it's absolutely disgraceful so thank you so much for all your work you've done uh, uh it's it's amazing what you've done i really mean it and it's wonderful and you were just telling me now i think we'd be good to open the show by saying uh, with a fascinating um thing about your great 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 aunt um who was an er who was into herbology and a herbalist in the olden days alice alice young she was hung um, uh, by the same cabal who tried to hang Robert here, Dr. Robert, um, for the same crime of helping people become well. And that's right. She was the first colonial witch, right, Robert? Hung. Yeah, she, um, <clears throat> she was an herbologist. Uh, she tried to help people naturally using plants. Uh, what a novel thought, considering that most uh, pharmaceutical drugs come from some uh, isolation of a chemical within some plant. Uh, so, yeah. but you know, the whole plant, uh, you can't patent that. You can't uh, necessarily profit off of it. Uh, but Alice was, was, uh, was an herbologist and she was a healer. And uh, she was the first in the colonial days, the first so-called witch that was executed. This was in 1647. Uh, so this has been going on for not just hundreds of years, but for thousands of years. People, uh, when they step up and speak the truth to power, uh, they end up uh, either losing their liberty or losing their life for doing so at the hands of what I call or what has been called the great and abominable secret. 
And it started from the beginning of time. And the great abominable secret is that you can take something from someone else, their profit, their life, their possessions, and that can become yours uh, through the extermination of that particular person. It's, uh, it's been practiced uh, for thousands of years. It's the great and abominable secret is that you can kill to get gain. Whether you kill someone politically or you kill someone uh, through character assassination, whether you actually physically assassinate someone to get gain, that is the greatest sin of all, the great and abominable secret. And it's been going on for eons of time. So the interesting thing about Alice was she had a choice. Uh, the evidence against her was circumstantial. It was produced. And from that evidence of her practice of natural healing, she had a choice. You're guilty as charged. You are a witch. And therefore, if you admit to being a witch, we will not burn you at the stake, we will hang you. So the first witches were not hung or executed or burnt in Salem, but in Connecticut. And this took place in 1647 of a relative. But we have a history of this uh, through our family. My great-great-grandfather, uh, Brigham Young, was uh, avoiding an execution order from Governor Boggs uh, of the state of Missouri that passed a law that it was legal to kill anyone who possessed to be a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, or uh, the nickname Mormon. So if you're a Mormon or have a background, up until 1976, it was legal the law still was on the books that allowed the execution of someone and their beliefs again. So this, these heinous crimes that were perpetuated against my family go way, way back from the 1600s all the way up to the 1800s and even current today where, where persecution through, pro, through production of, and prosecution uh, literally takes uh, not just your own freedom, but takes the freedom of those who desire to choose for themselves, whether to have natural treatments or to have um, chemical treatments, whether to be vaccinated or not to be vaccinated. Uh, these, these are human rights that we have to be able to, to, be able to choose you know, the path that we want to work. When it's, when it's not necessarily affecting anybody else other than the theoretical idea. And, and there was just a recent publication that went out on vaccination. There's no documented proof of any e efficacy of any vaccine. And in fact, uh, when I was in Dubai, my lecture was on, uh, where I presented a medical conference in Dubai the title of that is Unwinding the Viral Theory. So the depth of deception and deceit goes beyond the vaccine. It goes right to the core of the whole theory. And I don't know if, you, if you'd like to hear this story or not, or the listeners would, but in 2011, I was invited as a keynote speaker in conjunction with a, a conference, medical conference, that was being uh, conducted in Milan, Italy. And um, I had the honor to be uh, a keynote speaker with Luc Montier. Are you familiar with Luc Montier? No. Luc Montier received the Nobel Prize for his discovery of the so-called HIV virus. And he with another American uh, scientist uh, where they sh joint shared this discovery. And the interesting thing, uh, Robert Gallo's uh, work was based upon Luc Montier. 
Well, when I got to Milan, uh, I asked uh, Luke, who was a professor, I say was, a professor at the University of Paris, an esteemed, knowledgeable person on, on research as it relates to uh, this so-called viral theory, and had received a Nobel Prize for his work as it pertains to identifying this and then associating that identification with the condition, as we all know today, as the acquired immune deficiency or AIDS. The reason they call it syndrome, which is a dead giveaway. Syndrome means we don't know what the association is. If we knew, we could describe the pathology. We call it a syndrome, like chronic fatigue syndrome. There's no pathology on this to really describe, you know, how does this happen? What causes AIDS? What causes chronic fatigue? And so I asked Luke how he was, he was doing. He says, well, I've been exiled to China. I've lost my position at the University of Paris. I said, oh my heavens, why is this? He said, well, I've rethought my position on HIV as a direct cause of uh, AIDS. And I said, I said, wow, that's huge, especially since you received a Nobel Prize for this discovery. I says, well, that's why I lost my position at the University of Paris. Now, it's interesting that those who hold all the patents for the testing of the HIV virus are held by the United States government and the government of France. So they have a vested interest in continuing this association between a phantom virus, and I call it a phantom mm -hmm. virus because it's never been isolated using Koch's postulates which require that you isolate a microorganism or a specimen from the host, you then introduce it into a new host creating the same symptoms that appeared in the first one. It's never been done. HIV has never been proven. So this whole theory of unwinding, uh, this whole theory of viral theory, which by the way, the word virus in Latin means poison. Uh, <clears throat> the systemic poisoning of people, either from what one eats, what they drink, you know, what type of medications they're taking, the body has to deal with it. And, uh, uh, you know, Luke, presented in conjunction with what I was presenting on how using antioxidants, which are alkalizing agents, can help reduce the titers or loads of a particular uh, fragment that's being identified in this case as a virus uh, from cellular breakdown, which are basically what are called uh, uh, endo endotoxins or uh, bacterial macrophages, which you learn about in uh, your first courses of, of microbiology. So this is a very interesting thing uh, that when you speak truth to power, uh, you lose your position. The same thing happened, and I, and I present this to you as as evidence of the truth. A, another great scientist by the name of Peter Duisberg. Peter Duisberg uh, is currently at uh, Berkeley University and most of his work is done in the uh, viral world. Uh, he wrote the book called Inventing, and I wanna emphasize the word, Inventing the AIDS Virus. So he goes on within his book, not, it's a thousand page book, it's a wonderful book. He wrote it in 1983. When it was published, guess what happened to him? The same thing that happened to Luc Montier. He was demoted. And uh, he's, I think, back on top now, just like uh, Luc Montier is, but 
the problem is, is if you go against power and speak truth, you pay a dear price. And uh, that's a great book to read if you haven't read it, uh, Inventing the AIDS Virus, because in that, you could call the book Inventing the Hepatitis Virus, Inventing, you know, the Spanish flu virus, you know, I mean, the flu virus. Uh, I mean, these viruses are being identified not by isolation, but by symptom. And they said, well, it must be some sort of virus. You know, we know it's there, but, you know, why would this person have symptoms associated with this? So to understand this and why my research is so critically important is because the way that identifications are being made and today's blood tests that are being done, such as the comprehensive blood counts, such as a complete chemistry, they're inaccurate. And in many ways, worthless. And the reason why I say this is because it only represents 20% of the entire picture when you're looking at the fluids of the body. Now I've been studying this, as you know, for uh, over 35 years. And my colleague, associate and partner, Dr. Galina Magalco, and I published a paper while I was in how, on house arrest. We, we, we published this uh, later when I was able to publish it. Uh, this particular and very important uh, article, it's called Alkalizing Nutritional Therapy and the Prevent Prevention and, and Reversal of Any Cancerous Condition. I could change the title to Alkalizing Nutritional Therapy and the Prevention and Reversal of Any Disease, mm -hmm. including HIV, which actually is a, a condition not of a caused by a virus, but a condition of the most important test that anyone can do in order to determine their total health. And that is testing the interstitial fluids of the interstitium, which I learned about many, many years ago when I studied in Germany. And the German words for that is the colloidal connective tissue of the shod. This is a organ, just like the blood is a living flowing organ. Just last year, the American scientific community published that they had discovered a new organ. And they called this new organ the interstitium. And this interstitium has compartments, but they don't know how to measure it. They don't know how to measure the chemistry of that. Well, through new technology and, waving, and running wavelengths through this particular fluid, we're able to pick up a complete chemistry of the interstitial fluids a pH of the interstitial fluids, and then weigh that against conventional tests, which are invasive. We now have technology to be able to do 170 tests of the human blood without drawing one single drop of blood. We're able to test the hemoglobin, the hematocrit, the platelet counts, all of the blood counts and the chemistry including the pH of the blood. And for the naysayers out there who say, what you eat, what you drink, what you think does not affect the blood pH. The body has an autonomic system. It has a system to regulate the pH of the blood. That's true to a certain degree, but what they don't understand in their ignorance is what's happening in the largest organ of the human body. 
Now, if I was to ask you, what is the largest organ in the human body? What, what would you say? <laughs> I was preparing myself. I suppose the stomach or the brain, is it? Well, no, uh, it, it, most people, uh, and here again, if you, if you know uh, anatomy, most people would say the skin's the largest organ. Oh, right, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, I mean, you have, you have uh, orifices, which are the pores that allow gases and fluids to come out in order to preserve the integrity of the internal fluids. So they announced that the, they had just discovered the largest organ of the human body, and they named it the interstitium, which I've been studying for over three decades. So what does that mean? It means that we understand the relationship between the 20%, which is the blood, and the 80%, which is the interstitial fluids, which are compartmentalized in this organ called, runs through all of our organs. It's the fluid that surrounds every cell, but it's compartmentalized. That's why you have interstitial lung disease. That's why you have interstitial cystitis. All of these diseases, this is why you have cancer. This is why you have so-called infectious disease. It's not from the outside world. It's from the inside world and the body's inability to purify and maintain the integrity of the interstitial fluids. So one thing that's been omitted now is there is association between the loss of bone, okay, and uh, alkalinity. Alkalinity helps to prevent loss of bone. But no one has actually described the pathology of that. And you cannot describe the pathology of bone loss, which happens as we get older, unless you understand and measure the most important organ in its chemistry and its pH included, and understand that, that in comparison with the blood in order to get a true picture of 100%. Now, none of us would go to a movie, sit through 20% of it, come out and say, wow, that was a great movie. <laughs> and not actually see 80% of the movie. Well, I fell asleep in it. The medical profession is asleep at the will because they have no real training and education. And there's not a lab that I know of in the UK or in France or in the United States that is testing the chemistry and weighing that of the interstitium and weighing that against the blood. So let's go back to bone loss. If you're losing bone, you've done a bone density test. The question is why? The answer, if you're losing muscle mass, the question is why? The answers are found in the interstitium. Because what you see in the interstitium, when the blood is showing normal calcium levels, normal magnesium levels, the interstitium is showing hypercalcemia. It's showing that the body is pulling alkalinity from the bones and from the muscles into this organ to maintain the pH because of why? Because of your diet, because of your lifestyle, not because of some phantom virus or some infection it is actually being born within you because you're not eliminating and maintaining the delicate pH balance of what are called the extracellular fluids, which includes the blood plasma, which is 20% of that fluid, and the interstitial fluids, which is 80% of that. You have to get the full picture. This is the way you prevent disease. And I've written several articles on this. And everything is documented as it relates to the chemistry values and the comparison of three fluids of the human body. The blood plasma, the intracellular, pl intracellular the fluids within the cell, and the largest body of water, which are the interstitial fluids.
you have to have the entire picture and you have to know the chemistry in order to have a accurate diagnosis. So what does that mean for American medicine? What does that mean for the medicine that's being done? What you're working on is limited information coming to conclusions using treatments which cannot be verified. How can you validate the efficacy of a vaccine and its, its ability to help the body if you don't measure the interstitium and the interstitial fluids and see the negative effect it has on that? Just as we now know that the body, not think, we now know that the body is in hypercalcemia, pulling calcium ions from the bones, magnesium from the muscles, to maintain the delicate pH because you either drink too much alcohol, you're smoking stuff, whatever you're smoking uh, or breathing. So whatever you eat, whatever you drink, if you're eating lots of beef, chicken, pork, or fish, if you're drinking alcohol, if you're drinking coffee, if you're drinking chocolate, you can determine the efficacy of every food and how it impacts the interstitium, because that's where the show's going on. Not in the blood. The blood only shows up deficiencies when the interstitium or the interstitial fluids cannot keep up with its demand for alkalinity. So my work is based on two premises. That the human body, in all of its health and vitality, is balanced, uh, is, is alkaline by design. So, and balanced at a 7.365 pH. But you have to be able to test these fluids and you can't do a test and then wait for it. So there's no centrifuging, there's no anticoagulants that are added to the blood. We're looking at the blood in its natural state and testing it and quantitatively, testing it and getting these numbers. And this is, this is the great work that Dr. Galina Magalka and I are in, it's revolutionary. It changes everything because, because even in the alternative world, there's many, many claims. We can see whether there's efficacy to an herb, whether there's efficacy to some sort of vitamin and mineral and how it impacts the interstitium because that's the organ that we need to be testing. These are the fluids that we need to understand and then we can then do comparisons. And this is why we're having so many misdiagnostics or in not only false positives, uh, so, and these false positives are in the 90%, but we're having inadequate, inadequate diagnosis because we don't, we're not basing it on a complete picture. This is the new biology. This is the new chemistry. This is the, the new wave of the future, you know, now that, that uh, current medical science has accepted the reality of this organ uh, and they're trying to determine, you know, what they do about it. All they know is, you know, uh, we've got some titles for some new, uh, some new diseases, uh, but testing the interstitial fluids of the lung, of the core, you know, the interstitial fluids, whatever organ of the pancreas, all of this, these wavelengths go through every organ and organ system and gives us vital information to determine the functionality, not just the anatomy by doing, let's say, an MRI or CAT scan. That doesn't determine functionality. You could have a completely healthy looking organ that has zero function, well, not zero, but has limited functionality. And so this is why it's critical. I don't know if that was too much of uh, of an introduction, but I, I... <laughs> it wasn't. No, it wasn't. It's fantastic, Doctor uh, Young. It's just I'm just sat here. It's lovely, you know, just to hear hear what you're saying. Um, and of course, my mind's flying around. I try try to say as uh, I, I do shows on my own now. That gives me a chance to rant. But when you when there's someone like yourself on, we need to listen to you. Um, I just sat here thinking about <clears throat> as you're speaking, the insanity and the incredible madness of the whole system. I'm just picturing doctors, some doctors who I know, 
who are purposely not being who they are and being themselves because they've got a pension to, 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 and kids to feed and a mortgage. And so many people fear, uh, people are self-censoring more and more now, uh, Dr. Young, and, and fearing criticism because they can be shut down, like you said. That's why I've got so much respect for you. <clears throat> David Noakes and Lynn and other people who I know and have been fortunate to speak to on the show because with the threat of violence and persecution and even ultimately imprisonment and loss of liberty, you've still carried on forward talking the truth. And I, I, I honor you for that. I thank you so much. And there will be people who haven't been born yet down the timeline who, who will be thanking you in years to come for what you're doing, you know? And that man was right. You're the, one of the Martin Luther Kings of the, the medical world. And um, I've spoken to Dr. Graham Downing, who was a great doctor here in the UK. And um, we talk a lot about vaccinations and the, um, the, the pushing forward of forced vaccinations now. Because I, I did a piece for RT once, and it was called uh, Kill Em Just In Case. They were talking about, you know, dropping bombs on terrorists, and just in case you think they might be one, kill them just in case, you know. And it, it resonates with this, because it's like, well, we'll shut them down just in case. And it's that self-censorship now that really worries me, because, well, and, and, and the forced uh, inoculation, they're going to, well, Listen, to shut all the dissenters up, let's make sure we vaccination, vaccinate everyone. In other words, you can't go to school if you're not vaccinated. And once that's done, everyone's vaccinated, you know. And it's like you won't get a job if you're not vaccinated. You won't be able to do this. Or they won't be let into children's groups. And it's incredible. And, and I've said this many times on many shows. It's like these people are like the, the, the Dracula hiding in the shadows. They don't want to be shown. They don't want to be seen for what they're doing. So people like yourself come along and say, hey, wait, everybody. There's a, you know, I'm even scared to say it myself. There's a cure for cancer, you know, or you can do this and you won't get cancer. You know, like the old saying, the lock in the stable door when the horse is already gone. Why get cancer in the first place? You know, just look at Dr. Robert Young's work and you won't get cancer anyway. You do all the smoothies and you do everything and alkalize your body. You won't get cancer. But like you said. Well, the, yeah. And, and the key the key to all that is understanding their, uh, that the foods and the liquids and the air that we breathe, the water that we drink, all impact our body fluids. I mean, we're, when we're born, we're 90% water. And uh, when, we're, when we die, we're below 60%. Managing and maintaining the alkaline design of the human body, which is the basis of my work, realizing that all functionality of every organ and organ system produces acidic waste products, if not properly eliminated through the five channels of elimination, urination, defecation, perspiration, respiration, and for women, menstruation, these are held within the interstitial fluids. So some of them say, well, how do I measure that if I can't get a test in the UK? How can I at least you know, get some sort of reflection on what the interstitial fluid pH would be? Well, that's the purpose of testing your urine because the urine is not a product of the blood. It's a product of the interstitial fluids, of the interstitium. When you test that, the pH should be at least 7.2 or greater. But people don't realize when you know, normal, in, in, in medical terms, is anything running between 5.5 and 8.5, which is totally insane. You can't, have, you can't sustain a pH of, of the interstitial fluid at a 7.2 or 7.365, which is ideal, if the urine is showing a pH of 5.5, which is a reflection of all this poison that's being, being taken in the body and then released from the body. You have to manage and maintain the alkaline design of the body. No different than you would manage the pH of a swimming pool, the pH of a saltwater aquarium. If you don't do that, if you don't manage the environment, then the cells deteriorate. And this is where this whole disease model, the past year start, started uh, hundreds of years ago. The bacteria is, is, is the cause of, of, of are what ails us. But bacteria is a symptom of the environment. It's not the cause of it. It's kind of like blaming mosquitoes, you know, for polluting the swamp or blaming flies on the garbage. They don't, they don't create the garbage. They don't create the swamp. They migrate to that particular environment. Bacteria is not a 
think it's an evolutionary transformation, an evolutionary transformation of what used to be a healthy body cell. So how do you maintain a healthy body cell so it does not become diseased or cancerous or start giving birth to yeast? How do I get all these yeast infections? This word infection is the wrong word. It's an illusion to think that it's coming from the outside world, perpetuating the theory of Pasteur. Disease is born in us and from it. It's an outfection based upon the environment. Cancer is not a disease of the cells. It's not a genetic condition. It's a condition of the interstitial fluids, of the environment around the cell. Cancer is a liquid. The number one cause of cancer is the acid, lactic acid. You cannot have cancer. Guess who's measuring lactic acid levels? We measure it not only in the blood, but that's not critical or as critical because lactic acid levels in the blood don't represent the lactic acids that represent 80% of your body cells that surround the cell. We're testing the lactic acid loads that's, that are in that fluid, the interstitial fluid. With that information, we can then determine whether one's in compensated alkalosis or acidosis or decompensated acidosis. So what happens in the body to preserve the alkalinity of the blood, the body starts pulling calcium and magnesium from our body organs and bones to maintain, to pull it into the interstitium. Your interstitium fluids go up in pH, which is, is a hyper state of alkalinity, to maintain the pH of the blood so you don't die. But you don't have that information unless you test it. So you're actually working blindly. And that's why we have such incredible results in excess of 90%, whether we're dealing with lupus or we're dealing with HIV or if we're dealing with a cancerous condition it doesn't matter what the condition is because the cause is always the same. It's the over acidification of the interstitial fluids, then the blood. And I have to admit that I had it backwards. If you read my book, Sick and Tired, which I published in, in, in the 90s, I said there's only one sickness and one disease, and that's the over acidification of the blood then the tissues, and it's actually reverse. There's only one sickness and one disease, the over acidification of the interstitial fluids, then the blood. Cells break down because of their environment. Fish get sick because of the water they're swimming in. Bacteria and algae appear in stagnant waters. Things have to be flowing. Daily purification has to take place. This is how you understand the pathology of disease, by looking at the pH and all the chemistry of all the fluids. And this is what Dr. Galeen and I published and what we write about, what we lectured. We came to London in March of this year and we presented our argument for the cure, for the cause and the cure for cancer. And how, how, sorry to jump in, Dr. Robert. Go on, sorry, finish, finish that bit. Yeah, so I just gonna we ask you, presented go on. that, and our work was published mm. this year in a cancer journal. And we're getting invitations on a daily basis mm. to lecture on these subjects because people are interested because they gravitate naturally to the truth. Yeah, the truth has a perfume uh, to it, and people recognize it. There's no doubt about it, you know, and particularly when they use it and then they get the results from it. That's, that's the, uh, the ultimate test. But I wanted to ask you about the 1930s Cancer Act law or whatever it is that says you're not allowed to say that you can cure cancer uh, with anything other than <laughs> chemotherapy and radiotherapy, right? I believe that's still in place. And is that one of the main reasons they'll jump on anybody like yourself and, and ultimately throw you in prison um, because you, you, you speak about it and say that? Um, where are we with that? Well, that's that's, that's got to be changed, you know? Yeah, that has to be changed because if you do chemotherapy, you can then measure the effect on the interstitium mm. and what it's actually doing and why chemotherapy is 
totally indiscriminate because it pollutes the environment. It throws the body into decompensated acidosis, not of the blood, but of the interstitial fluids, which causes... Dr. Young broke up there. Your voice broke up there. Dr. Young, I'll just jump in and say what we didn't hear then was that it's indiscriminate. Um, and it um, is on, Dr. Robert Young's on about <clears throat> chemotherapy is indiscriminate. I've seen it, uh, members of my family. Um, just while we get Dr. Robert back there, if you can hear me, Dr. Robert, we can't hear you frozen up. So whatever you did last time, do it again. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, uh, <clears throat> it's a choice people have uh, uh, make. It's like, uh, um, you know, I didn't want my dad to have uh, chemotherapy. I wanted him to try it another way, and he didn't. He just went with everything the doctors said. Uh, if the doctors had said, you know, do anything, he probably would have done it. And there's nothing to say badly of my father, but that's the choice he made, and I respect that choice. But I have watched someone having chemotherapy um, and having it injected into them and what happens to them. And the truth of the matter is, as Dr. Robert just yet said, it is indiscriminate. It sort of almost kills all the cells in your body or all the cancer cells and the other cells in your body. So it's almost like it kills everything. And hopefully when you, they stop the radio, the chemotherapy, then slowly, hopefully you can come back from the dead really, because that's what happens. I've been in, I've been in those wards so many times on the cancer wards. I used to take my father in an hour of the cancer wards and I've seen what it does to people, but everyone is terrified to try anything else because um, uh, they fear persecution from their own family. They fear death ultimately. So it's like, well, rather go with that and get sort of almost killed by chemotherapy because it's not that successful um, uh, rather than try something different. Um, <clears throat> we did some things with my father uh, after he had the chemotherapy, we, which I think were very beneficial to him. Um, but I, I can say it's a very, very, very terrible system. And when, and, and, and it's kept going. And, and I'll say this, just while we're waiting for uh, Dr. Robert to come back, which I'm, I hope he will in a minute. Um, that's, this 1930s Cancer Act is, is a dreadful thing. It's, so if, you, if, if I say, hey, I've got a cure for cancer. Come this way, ladies and gentlemen. I'll show you what to do. All you need to do is realkalize your body. Do this, do that, do that. And, and, and the cancer companies will, will shoot you down in flames, you know. So this is stopping people coming forward and speaking about stuff like this. And uh, it, it's a dreadful, dreadful system. Hang on a second. I think we've got Dr. Robert back here. Have we to wait a second. Let's just try and find one moment. Sorry about this. We had him there just now. Uh, here we go. No, nope. it looks like we've lost Dr. Robert Young. But um, I can get him back in a minute or you can probably jump back in with us. I'm not sure how, it, how that might happen. Hang on one second. There we go. Um, so I'm back here on my own. Oh, hang on. Here's Dr. Robert coming back again. Hi, Dr. Robert. You're back. Yeah. Sorry about you know, that. I was just know, saying, uh, what, what uh, Albert Einstein said something very profound. He said, he said this, if you can't explain something simply, you don't understand what you're talking about. Mm. And l let me just say it simply. Cancer is a disease of the fluids of the body, not the cells, period. Mm. You can either accept it or reject it. But the reason I can say that is because we are testing the fluids and everyone that has a cancerous condition of the body, that has a serious degenerative or even inflammatory disease, Inflammatory, we see increases in alkalinity in the interstitial fluids. The body's trying to protect itself. But in degenerative disease, you've run out of time, you've run out of resources, and the cells are breaking down. But, but very simply, cancer is the disease of the interstitial fluids that surround every single cell that make up every organ, organ system. It is not a genetic disease. It's not... It, 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 it's not a disease of the cell, it's a disease of the fluids. And the major cause, and I learned this many years ago uh, from my professor in, in Germany. Uh, she taught me 
that the major acid that's associated with cancer, there are two of them. Citric acid, that's why I do not recommend, you know, the use of vitamin C. Citric acid, and the other one is lactic acid. Lactic acid, the major one, uh, and, and the major thing that we're testing right now. Uh, but the bottom line is in our research, and that's what we are. We're research scientists. We're doing research. And the reason we're doing this is we are motivated and convinced that we are on the right path. And we've been doing this now for over three decades. And our success rates are phenomenal for those who are practicing a self-care to a self-treatment. I want to emphasize that mm -hmm. we don't treat patients patient heal yourself mm -hmm. with knowledge a patient can take control of their health and vitality once they have this information they can then treat themselves you know correctly and have a good success and this is what we're finding so Dr. with the power of this knowledge mm -hmm of understanding the entire picture of the blood plasma, quantifying that, the interstitial fluids, of the organ of the intrastidium, testing the fluids, intracellular fluids. When we understand these, these numbers, we can then determine the efficacy and the pathology of disease and the efficacy of the treatments that are targeted against these diseases. Mm. And I, 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 and that's, I, that's really a summation of, 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 of our work. And then and, and I, I'm convinced what will happen then, and, and I believe we're on the threshold of that now, uh, Robert, is that people will then say, well, I'll try that. I'll try what the kind of thing you're saying and not say, Dr. Robert cured me. I'm treating myself. Yeah. And then it'll be a case of all these people are being cured, curing themselves of cancer naturally and then what are they going to do throw everyone in prison mm -hmm. that's curing themselves of cancer you know what i'm trying to say robert and i believe truly believe that if there's enough people doing that then i believe the cancer mafia cabal and their chemotherapy and radiotherapy will just fizzle and dissolve away uh, well we have we have hard evidence of the efficacy of chemical treatments mm. we see what it does mm. Quanti uh, and, and it's quantified what it does to the chemistry, including the pH of those particular fluids. Mm. Uh, and it's, it's devastating. I was just saying, when, devastating. You, when, you, when you take you, the focus off the cell, mm. this is key. Mm. When you take the focus off the cell, off the genetics and realize that 99% of what ails you is an expression of the cleanliness of the internal fluids, the alkalinity of the internal fluids, which the main one is the interstitial fluids. And the reason for that is because the fluids of the intracellular fluids that are producing, that are being energized, producing, because we are electrical beings, but we produce chemical wastes. These chemical wastes go to the interstitium. The chemical wastes of every body cell goes to the interstitium. This is where it all begins. If the body can't remove that through your elimination channels, that's why exercise is so critical because you're removing waste from the interstitium. Mm -hmm. That's why, you know, three to five bowel movements a day, eliminating waste out of, uh, you know, through defecation, urination. If you want to get healthy, you have to pee your way to health. Mm -hmm. It's that simple. Uh, so sweating, urinating, defecating, breathing properly. You know, we relieve ourselves of toxic acidic gases like carbon dioxide, like carbon monoxide. These have to be done in order to maintain the integrity. And Dr. Carroll, who received the Nobel Prize for his discovery of determining the life of a human cell, and his discovery shows that the life of a human cell and an organ is infinite if we manage and maintain the delicate pH balance of our internal fluids. All of them, not just the blood, the interstitial fluids, and interstitial. We manage that. 
and understand it. And then the easiest way to, to manage that is through uh, testing the urine, but a, a more direct way is an interstitial fluid test, whole body test, uh, to determine the chemistry and the, uh, including the pH of, of those fluids to find out exactly where you're at there. It's quite revealing. Determining yeah. the functionality of every organ and organ systems, not just anatomy through doing scans, which are typical, which have radiation, which have side effects, but a non-invasive, non-chemical approach to medical diagnostics. That's the world, that's the future that I perceive. Mm. And the treatments that we use are non-invasive, non-chemical treatments that allow you to restore your health naturally. Yeah, so I'll stop. That's the world that I, <clears throat> that I, I perceive. And you've initiated. You've initiated. If that's the world that you want, then and, and 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 you're looking for more information. If you have a diagnosis, if you have no diagnosis but you have symptoms, the only way you're going to understand what's going on is to test these fluids, and that's true for sepsis. Sepsis is the number one cause of death in hospitals. It's, it, it, millions and millions of people around the world. You don't hear about this. People die from sepsis which can be prevented if you understand what needs to be done. And very simply, you need to hyperperfuse alkalinity into the interstitial fluids. And that's the protocol that we've developed to hyperperfuse alkalinity through the orifices of the body naturally to infuse this alkalinity, to bathe the cells in their natural alkaline state so that they can thrive. This is how you thrive. I've worked you don't with thrive by taking antibiotics. You don't thrive by taking chemotherapy. That is a kill mindset mentality. You thrive when you restore and rebuild and regenerate. I've been you cannot restore and regenerate if you don't understand how to hyperperfuse, how to manage, how to maintain the alkaline design of the, of the body fluids. I've been in many hospitals, uh, Robert, and um, with my father, when he had chem chemotherapy, I was just saying while you were off camera, we haven't, no, we haven't got long here, we've got to close in a minute. Um, just to say that, um, you know, I've seen them in hospitals, the whole hospital system has got to change everything because they're killing people in hospital. You go in hospitals, all these ill people with cancer and different well, things, and guess what they're giving them? Apple pie and custard and ice cream and yeah. sandwiches. Well, they, they have good intention because they have this ideology that they've mm. been taught, and that's changing. Mm. That's changing. It is People changing. People need to be educated. The food does matter. And what mm. you eat, what you drink, what you breathe, what you think, what you feel, what you mm. believe does matter. It affects the internal environment. Mental nutrition. Mental nutrition. Yeah. This does matter. These changes need to take place with our doctors. It's education. It's not more medication. And when we understand that these, the doctors can still thrive in what they're doing, People still need medical doctors for help, you know? Uh, but once they understand these other very important things, they can, they can treat their patients, you know, more successfully, more sanely, and, and without causing harm. And, and that's the hypocritic oath, is to do no harm. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's great work you're doing, Dr. Robert. I know we've got to close in a minute. It goes very click quickly with you, but it's a, it's a whole thing. I mean, my wife wants to start um, these new hospitals and um, she was con contacting you, I think something like 20 years ago to ask your advice about it, uh, where people can be, be helped um, w without, without uh, this other kind of thing, which is gonna, it, it, I think for a tipping point where people are so ill, I mean, I've been very ill years ago with drinking too much and I couldn't even turn a screwdriver without my wrists hurting, my hips were hurting, my stomach was hurting, I was getting vision going like that. I was on the- that, that's, all, that's all a disease of the interstitial fluid. All yeah. those were symptoms yeah. of decompensated acidosis yeah. of the interstitial fluids. Yeah, red wine every night. I, was, I took myself to the very limit of disaster. You can't, but... you can't thrive on red wine. No, it you, doesn't, can't. <laughs> you can't. I mean, the cells do, they get drunk themselves. Yeah. They can't thrive in that kind of environment. Mm. But I'm glad it happened to me. And most of the, before we close, I want to just say this. Most people are sick and tired. 
and it's become normal. Most people are drinking wine every night. Most people are eating rubbish and it's become normal to be ill and sick and tired. And there's a lot of money being made off it. But I think we're at a great tipping point, uh, Dr. Robert, where people have gone so far into illness, mentally and physically, and depression and anxiety and worry and fear, which doesn't help the immune system either. Um, do you, you see a change coming, a great turning point, surely, in consciousness, awakening? Yeah, it's hap- there's, a, there's a new awakening. You know, the, the Aquarius uh, is, is rising and uh, there, there's a new dawning. And the new biology, the new chemistry, the new physics is going to be seen this coming, this coming spring. Definitely. You will see it. Mm. It will be in 29 different languages. Mm. It will be going worldwide. Mm. A new dawn is coming. Aquarius mm. is rising. And we're just happy to be part of this great movement of increased uh, awareness and consciousness. Mm. Thank you, Dr. Young. And it's, a, it's an honor to be on the planet at the same time as you. Now, just before you go, um, about your books, uh, what, what have we got now? We've got the PH Miracle. That's been um, updated, hasn't it? Well, to, to, to read about the interstitial fluids <clears throat> and learn more about it, uh, this is really a, a great a book that Dr. Galina and I have, have, have published. Uh, it's called Alkalizing Nutritional Therapy and the Prevention and Reversal of Any cancerous condition, but in this case, any symptoms of imbalances, dis-ease. Uh, my latest work uh, in conjunction with Dr. Galina Magalco is the pH miracle uh, for cancer. Wonderful. And you can buy this online. Uh, check it out, uh, uh, phmiracleproducts.com. And, you know, I always leave that to the last because I I forget, oh, by the way, where do you get this information? But that's the best place to get it, phmiracleproducts.com. And uh, to get the actual book, or if you want to get a digital book, uh, those are also available. Uh, So I've written over 70 books, published over 3,000 articles. But if you want to learn more about my work, you can go to drrobertyoung.com. And uh, you'll, you'll see uh, scientific posts and publications there and publications, and uh, you can learn more. Uh, so there's a lot, of, a lot of great things happening coming up in 2020, and I'm just excited to be free at last <laughs> and to be able to participate in this conversation because that's really what I'm doing is, is trying to educate, motivate people through education. And I would suggest each one then needs to teach one. Each Mm. one, teach one, so that this spreads throughout our entire planet. Absolutely, because it's at the moment it's like a big cancer going around the planet. This 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 misinformation, and they're trying to shut everybody up who who is telling the truth. And there's only one um, antidote to that: to speak more truth. And um, you know, thank you so much for being you. I've got to show my own book before we go: the emergency transformation of human beings. As the solution to the world's problems, that's my book. I talk about similar things, but not so medical as um, uh, Dr. Young. Dr. Young, look, <clears throat> I've purposely not said too much in this, in this um, chat we've had here. I- I'm honored to have you on the show. And thank you so much for being you. And thank you so much for all the work you've done. Uh, it's oh, thank incredible. You. Thank you for this opportunity to share. And, and in the words of, of Moses, uh, the prophet of, of old, My people perish because of lack of knowledge. Knowledge is power. And if you want to thrive in today's world, where we're dealing with 5G and and chemical pollution and vaccinations and and distorted uh, types of uh, chemical treatments to try to restore health, you cannot get there where you want to go. If you want to thrive and stay alive, and not just alive, but you want to thrive while you're alive, You know, having this knowledge is powerful. It will not only change your life, but it will save your life. And that's what I'm all about. And for anyone that knows me, that's where my heart is. My heart is to empower people with this knowledge so that they can take control, they can take back control of their life and their destiny. 
Well, you've proved your commitment to helping people survive by actually sacrificing yourself on the altar of fire, like your great, great, great auntie. You've been put in prison for, for speaking the truth and helping other people. I honor you for that. And just before I go, I've got you on, because you mentioned 5G, I just got to say that Barry Trower, an amazing physicist and actual weapons expert, is speaking in the town hall here in Totnes tomorrow night, Wednesday, the 11th at 7 o'clock. Come to that. I've been to Barry Trower's house. He's been on my show. He's an amazing man. I honor him, and he's going to be speaking the truth about 5G and what it's going to do to us if we don't stop it. And I know you talk about that yourself, but we can, we can talk about that again. So um, thanks so much, Dr. Young. Really honor you. Thanks for the ITNJ um, testimony. Made many people cry. Amazing man. And thank you for still doing your work uh, and, 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 and with all the pressure that's being piled on you. And thanks, Mark. Get that book for my wife. Tomorrow I'll be ordering that book and I'll look forward to reading it myself and, and becoming healthier myself thanks to someone like you. Thank you so much. Thank you.